Here Be Icebergs is a collection of 12 short stories by Peruvian writer Kacha Adawi. It's translated from the Spanish by Rosalind Harvey, published by Chaco Press, and it is fascinating. Adawi herself has had a pretty prolific academic career. She studied in Paris, New York, Beijing, and now she lives and works in Buenos Aires. And what you've got here is a collection that explores family. That is the broadest term that you can use to encompass this collection. But I think about family, the concept of family, an awful lot. When it comes to my own personal life, my friends, the fiction that I read, the stories I encounter, family as a concept is an enormous thing, and Adawi certainly is curious about that as well, as you can see from the content of this collection. What exactly family means to us, what it provides to us, how complex and difficult and messy it all is, is explored here in ways that I didn't even expect, especially considering the fact that it's not just talking about blood family, but found families, social groups, the families that we build for ourselves, not just in terms of the people we get married to or have kids with, but also the families that we surround ourselves with socially, our circle of friends, especially growing up. Family is such a difficult concept, such a broad thing, and the way that it's explored here, and the messiness of it, regardless of what form it takes, is what makes this such a successful collection of pretty dark and sometimes surreal short stories. Although using the word surreal is a little bit misleading, perhaps, there's nothing surreal in terms of the content, really. They're very grounded tales, they're very ordinary, they are about life. But they're surreal in terms of how they are structured, and I think that's perhaps the most interesting thing here. What really got me as I read more and more of these stories is the fact that they all begin in the middle, and it made me think about how we communicate stories about our families to one another. If someone asks you, what's your relationship like with your parents? If someone asks you, what was it like growing up? If someone asks you, do you get on with your dad? You're not going to start at the beginning. You might tell them a story, but you're not going to start at the beginning. You're not going to start with your birth. You're not going to start with your earliest memory. You're going to start in the middle. You're going to tell a random story that encompasses the relationship they've asked you about. You might even just describe that person. And that's kind of what you get here. These stories don't really have a beginning, middle, and end. A lot of them just kind of tell a snapshot of a life or a relationship. Or they might even begin in the middle and then flip backwards for a minute to fill you in on things you might need to know. They jump around haphazardly. And it's up to you, the reader, to keep a track of what's going on, who you're following, where we are at any given moment. Because it's very much like how we talk about our families, our lives, our relationships. It really feels like a mirror held up to our relationship to relationships. I find that fascinating. The structure, even down to the grammatical level of these stories, is very relatable in terms of how our brains work, our memories work, the ways that we think, the ways that we encapsulate the people around us into little pockets in our brains, little memories or adjectives, descriptors, anecdotes. That's what this book feels like, a collection of random pockets of brain. It's fascinating. The very first story in here, which is also possibly the longest story in here, is a really good example. It is a story kind of like the movie Memento, where it works backwards from the end to the beginning. It begins with a mother and daughter, the daughter is an adult, and the mother is looking through photos and memories and, oh, didn't you have such a happy childhood? And they're reminiscing and you can tell that the daughter doesn't really agree. And then we move backwards, step by step, all the way through her life, right back to the beginning, right back to her childhood. And we see all of the messiness and grossness and the hurdles and the fights and the banter and the falling outs and where they came from and why. And that arguably is the most narratively succinct story in here, the one that moves backwards. Most of the others just tell random vignettes, random memories and moments. There's a really good one, the one that stuck in my head the most perhaps, is one about a trip to the beach. You've got a protagonist, and she's going to the beach with her sister and brother-in-law. And people do not like the brother-in-law. There are just little comments and moments and thoughts that pop into the protagonist's head. Things that people have said to her. Oh, I'm not coming if he's going. Things like that. And it ends with a car crash. 
and a trip to a police station. And I'm not really going to tell you any more, but this one really stuck in my head because it looks at the ways in which we hear about people, secondhand knowledge, or the way that we carry around opinions of the people we love that have been given to us by other people. Maybe you love your dad, but someone once told you, maybe an ex or a family friend said, oh, I don't really like him or whatever. And that's stuck in your head. And you think, oh, I love my dad, but I know that there's this one person that doesn't, you know? And that's kind of what this story does, is that you, as a reader, only get the protagonist's perspective and what happens in the story, but you also know that there is background noise, there is information from these characters' pasts that influences what happens in the story to a point, or influences the protagonist's relationship, but you don't know much about it, because we only ever know so much. Perspective, and who to trust, and who to understand and connect with, is a really big thing in this collection. You cannot trust everybody, you cannot know everybody, you are just thrown into their life for a second and then thrown back again. There's an unreliableness to the narration, like in a Kazuo Shiguro novel. And I really, really appreciate that, because it made it seem like I was being told completely true stories about people's lives, because this remarks on and reflects how we tell stories about our lives, about our families, about the people around us. There's so much bias here. We're getting experiences, we're being shown them, but we're also being told background information, and I, I, I'm so amazed by the narrative structure in here. The ways in which these stories are told, structured, even deconstructed at times. I find the method of storytelling to be the most interesting thing here, as well as the concept of family itself. There's one story that's a road trip, and it's a group of friends who are probably in their late teens, and they're going on a road trip together and they're chatting. I think it's three or four boys. And they're a found family, effectively, but you also know that they have been sort of carved out as human beings by their experiences, by their youth, and by their blood family as well. And we're constantly looking at the concept of family. I bring this up a lot in videos and articles. I'm obsessed with found family. The idea that we need to build a family around us of people who understand us. As someone who is queer and neurodiverse, this is something that's so important to me. The idea of surrounding myself by a family that means something to me, that I have cherry-picked, that I have forged by myself. People who are like me. People who enjoy me people whom I can enjoy. Found family is important, and that also gets explored in Here Be Icebergs. I thought it was a wonderful touch, the fact that we're not just looking at blood family, not at all, but we even look at the relationship between blood family and found family, and how that works. Family is a messy and gross thing, and the book also looks at how even when a family functions, just fine. It's still messy and gross and broken and hard. And I don't think any of us can deny this, that you might have a family that functions, but is it functioning well or as well as it could be? And we look at why that is and the disparate dynamics of our families. The fact that you might get along with your family, but would you get along with them if you didn't know them? Would you get along with them if you weren't related to them, if they were people that you just met yesterday? I think about this an awful lot when it comes to my family, and families that I've met, and families I've spent time with. I've been thinking a lot recently about the idea that parents are two people. Not in the sense that most of us have two parents, but in that a parent is two people. Your parent is your parent. That is a role that they have, it is a person that you know, it is a persona that they express but then they are also a person with a name and a history and a background and traumas and everything of their own. And I think about that a lot. I think about my dad and the fact that I love my dad. He's a good dad. I'm an only child and my dad is a good dad to me. But my dad is also this guy and me and this guy don't always see eye to eye. We don't always get along. We don't always agree on everything. And I find this so interesting and that is explored here. That's why I'm waffling. That's why I'm so enamored with what happens here, is because that exact concept is explored here in beautiful, dynamic, and wonderfully literary ways. There are such big ideas and concepts in such small stories. This is a really tiny little book, and there are so many big concepts and ideas, things that I really related to. And most of all, as I said, it's the structure, the grammar of it, the ways in which these stories are told to us. The fact that they always begin in the middle, 
and there's so much bias and so much that's unreliable here. I love it. The fact that so often when you ask a friend to talk about their family, you're only getting their side, you're only getting their perspective. Maybe they tell you a story, maybe that story is accurate, maybe it isn't. There's so much left unsaid and you get a lot left unsaid here. I'm so impressed with this collection. Please check out Here Be Icebergs. Wonderfully written, wonderfully translated, beautiful cover, fantastic. Check it out and subscribe for books.